mostly investors, when they're overwhelmed by, you know, where should I invest? Where should I park my money? Uh, a, I know there's no quick way, but a way to evaluate a company and not spend hours and hours studying it, like, and that's where Archie's rule comes in, correct? That's exactly right. That's a very simple metric. Um, most companies will give you the ingredients for figuring it out, whether they know it or not. Uh, but it's very simple. You must be able to recover twice your all-in operating costs um, for the project to make sense. And so you simply plot the solution of whatever the operating costs are for that project on a graph of grade versus metal price. And it's not a straight line. It's a curve that flattens as you get to lower and lower grade uh, and you just see which side they fall on the line and if it falls on the upside of the line in the economic zone then yeah. everything's good if it doesn't quite make it then you need to understand why not and if it really doesn't come close then it's called next oh so looking at the space now if you had to assess it how many are falling in the good camp um, in the silver space, not that many. Um, and, and, you know, I should point out that we use this metric on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. it, it's, the, there's nothing difficult about it. Um, but if we, we look at hundreds of opportunities and we look very quickly, if it doesn't make Archie happy, then we go on or we try to understand. Yeah, And Archie was a real person. Right? Archie right. was a real person. Right. This isn't Archie Andrews right. out of the comic right. book. This is a guy named Archie Bell who was the VP of Exploration Ruin for Naranda. Naranda. Right. And a number of us in the company came up through Naranda, so we give him his name. But the metric itself is not unique to Archie or to Naranda. It's been applied by many companies. So it's sort of a rule of thumb that exists in similar forms throughout the industry. So we see, you know, silver mine. I actually think there's a lot of positive energy at this conference surrounding uh, the silver space, even though we're not seeing it reflected in price yet, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but let's talk about the scarcity of silver projects out there. Uh, you know, is this a concern for you? Well, it's a concern in terms of where the silver supply is going to come from, but right. it's it's an opportunity as far as looking for the next important silver deposit is concerned, because that's I mean, that's that's what exploration geology all is well, all about is finding something. Okay, that matters. well, bingo! How much of that is happening? We see the M and A happening in the space now. Is this just a quick fix, and we've lost focus? I, to some extent. It's, uh, I think we, we simply haven't geared back up since probably 2012. The industry really hasn't recovered from the dip in the silver price that, that followed the big boom yeah. following the, the global financial crisis. But I, I, you know, to put it into perspective, we started Mag Silver when silver was less than $4 an ounce. So at $20 an ounce, we're very happy. Our project and the kinds of projects we like to look at would make money. I mean, at eight dollars silver, we still have a fifteen percent after-tax IRR, and so those are the kinds of metrics that you have to look for. Those don't grow on trees. They don't. You yes. have to go out and look for them. But there's geologic ways that you can narrow your search parameters, and once you identify where you want to be exploring, you can maximize your chance of finding big deposits. And if you look around, companies are doing it. Yeah, you, you threw in an interesting metric, 60 billion ounces of silver, historically? That's, that's Yeah, that's roughly what's right. been produced in human history. But but you were saying if, the, you know, we talk so much about the green revolution, how much silver will be crucial, but you're saying even with recycling, it wouldn't be enough. Well, to begin with, the estimates are that only half of that silver is left around. It's not like gold, where almost every ounce of gold that's ever mined is still around. Right. Silver gets used, and it gets used in ways that can't be recovered. And that ranges everywhere from, uh, you know, well, jewelry could be recycled. But the fillings in your teeth, those get ground up and they're gone. Those little RFIDs that you see everywhere, those use an appreciable amount of silver. They don't get recycled. Uh, so over time... A lot of the silver that's ever been found is gone. So you're talking a, a reservoir of potentially usable silver on the realm of 30 billion ounces, and not all of that's available. So over time, we need a, we need a lot more silver. Sil we need to go out and find it. Silver is scarce. Yes, silver is scarce. Let's talk about the silver price. 
you're talking fallacies and you know fifty dollars silver, hundred dollars silver. When people talk about those price projections, what are your thoughts? The, you know, obviously, I would be more than happy to see prices like that, at least in the short term. Except you need to think about what that means, because. Silver going to fifty or a hundred dollars an ounce means that you've got some kind of major economic catastrophe, and you know, we don't live in a silver igloo that allows us to experience those benefits without paying the cost. So, you know, it's going to affect everything. But, but even beyond that, the assumption is that just silver is going to go up. Right. That you know, it's inflation that. People are saying it's going to drive the price of silver. If if it's inflation, it affects everything. It's going to start with energy. It's going to move into steel. It's going to move into all of That's your right. labor. It's going to move into all of your operating costs. So the only way those predictions make any sense is if you believe that silver is going to go up like a balloon by itself, and everything else is going to stay behind. That works in the Wizard of Oz, but I don't think it works anywhere else. Yeah, and that's such an important point. And I say the same thing to folks who want five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar gold. Be careful I, what you wish for. You know, and 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 you don't necessarily need those prices to get the results uh, with the miners. No, and if you've been in the business as long as I have, I've been hearing people talking about this happening for more than forty years. Yeah, and you know, I gave up waiting up nights for that a long time ago. Look. When you uh, look at the industry today, is there anything that, well, I want to know, anything that angers you right now that you see being done wrong that just keeps you up at night? Well, I'm not sure it keeps me up at night, but I don't like seeing investors misled on the benefits or potential benefits of a particular property when a project is being, I don't want to say misrepresented, but let's just say, being cast in the most possible favorable light in an industry where we need to be hard-nosed, we need to be conservative at every step, because we're talking 10 to 20 years from discovery to production, and a lot is going to change during that period of time. How can investors get the knowledge to know when they're being misled? Is it just attending conferences like this, or you know, what would you say? Well, yes, attending conferences helps, but what matters the most is that you you learn to look for a few key points. Right. Um, first of all, take take the numbers that people are talking about for OPEX and their grade and look at how it plots with Archie's rule. That's a very easy first step. After that, look at how the data are being presented. Are things being presented as silver equivalent? And if they're yeah. presented as silver equivalent, do they give you the the recipe that was used? Did they give you the metal price? Did they simply multiply the metal value times the price and assume that that you're going to get a hundred percent of that? I mean, for example, you see recasting of zinc as silver. Well, you know you're going to get paid for ninety eight percent of your silver by a refinery. You're going to be lucky to be paid for seventy five percent of the value of the zinc by a smelter. So. It, it, are are they giving you the haircut right. all the way along? And there's a number of analysts out there who want to present sort of what they want to consider an apples to apples number that people can compare, and they'll give you the recipe that they followed. And so when I see silver equivalent of you know, say a thousand, just for round numbers, if someone says well, you know we got a thousand thousand grams silver, yeah. great silver equivalent. First thing I check is. So how much is the real silver in right. that? And if it's 150 out of 1,000, you go, okay, why are they doing this? And it's probably not, yeah. it, 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 it's not benign, let's put it that way. You know, I, I started by saying there's, there's some good energy in the silver space right now. Uh, even Randy Smallwood, who sits as the chair of the World Gold Council, said he prefers so silver, silver over gold right now. So I was a little surprised uh, to hear that. So I guess my your thoughts to to investors watching, uh, you know, who are just waiting for silver to, to take off, who've paid their dues, who've waited patiently. Make sure you're into something that will make money the way things are now. If something is profitable under the current conditions, yeah. or under the worst conditions you can imagine, you can sleep at night, and when things get better, 
you can party all night if that's your predilection. I, I just want to end with two uh, you know, lighter note stories. So one, I can't help but notice your beautiful diamond earring. Mm -hmm. uh, what I believe was uh, a bet. Is yep. that what happened? Took me, 50, this? took me 15 years to win the bet. <laughs> but uh, we, Mag was at $3.50 a share. Uh, we were, we had a very pleasant Christmas party. Yeah, we, we, pleasant. We, we, knew, <laughs> we knew we had a big intercept, but we didn't have the numbers yet. And so we were just bantering about in the back of the car on the right. way back to the hotel. And the controller of the company said, well, if we get to seven I'll get to get an yep. earring. And then someone else spoke up for 10, someone else spoke up for 15, someone else spoke up for 20. I got 25. So you guys, there's a bunch of guys out there. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and there was a gal or two gal involved. Too. But they didn't count in terms of earrings because yeah. they already had earrings. Right, right, right. Uh, it got to $15, which was the CFO's target. He had the earring in for three days. He took it out. Share price went below 15 ah. and stayed there for eight years before it went back above 15 again. And then for the next five years, I sat there I waiting that. until finally on November 11, 2020. Went we down closed, to the mall. Went down <laughs> to the mall and said, I like that diamond. 